Task CEO, Professor Andreas Diakon, uh, speaking to us now about this. Uh, Prof, a very good morning and thanks so much for your time. Um, given what, what we know or what we don't know about COVID-19 at the moment, uh, about its, its origins even, what has led a Task in, in this direction to, to, to use this particular vaccine, this BCG vaccine, as a test case? Yeah, good morning and thanks for having me on this show. Um, just a small correction, we actually haven't put a hundred, hundreds of people on. It was so far, it's just two because we started yesterday. But it, uh, what brought us there was uh, at first uh, an interesting observation that countries that have a policy of vaccinating all the babies with this TB vaccine seem to do better in this uh, epidemic. And there's also <clears throat> various experiences with this vaccine over the years that it seems to have effects that protect people from other things than just TB. From general, children die less if they have been vaccinated and people seem to get less lung cancer 40 years after vaccination. Mm -hmm. A lot of these things that no one can really explain, but it has been shown that the immune system somehow gets reprogrammed with this vaccine. And we have uh, hopes that this might help against COVID-19, though this is speculation and it really needs to be tested. Okay, so this was done yesterday, you say. What, what are you looking for now in the days and weeks to come? So obviously we need to vaccinate a lot of people and we have set it up in such a way that uh, half the participants will be vaccinated with a real vaccine and the other half will receive a placebo. The participants don't know what they're getting and we don't know what they're getting and then we will follow them up regularly, weekly to monthly and we want to know how they're doing and obviously we want to know if they've been infected with a virus and if they have had symptoms of uh, respiratory tract infection. And we will then report these results to an independent committee that will look if we actually have a protection by BCG. So the committee will know which participants got what type of injection. And they will then report back to us regularly if we should keep observing mm. people or we should stop, uh, stop at that point because we have a protect result. So, uh, Prof, just, just help us understand this, for those of us who don't understand how these trials work. The, the two people or the people that you have injected are going to be um, injected. Do they have symptoms of COVID-19? Are they perfectly healthy? Are you injecting them and then maybe exposing them to conditions where they might contract COVID-19? How exactly does this work? <laughs> So it, uh, it, it works like this, it's called a clinical trial, so participation is completely voluntary and, and uh, the two people we have vaccinated were just the first two that volunteered. And um, so we vaccinating completely healthy people, it's a vaccination, so it's supposed to protect you from things that are going to happen in future. And then we will observe them and we have chosen as the most or the best candidates to participate people that are healthcare workers. They uh, work in a big Cape Town hospital and we think that such hospitals will be a, a hub where infection can take place and where the risk of being infected is highest. So this is good for us so for, for, the, for the study because we can both show protection if it's there faster and we will show it in people that need the protection most. So we will then uh, have a result that's relevant for, for our people. Okay, so it won't just stop at the fact that, that they didn't contract COVID-19 despite being healthcare workers, despite having some level of exposure, because obviously that could just mean they were protecting themselves very well on, on the surface of things with PPE and all of that. So what's the next step after this? And, and what's your deadline to determine whether this has worked or not? Well, we don't really have a deadline and it's a bit, it will depend on how quick the, the epidemic is. Let's assume we, we put a thousand people onto this study and after a year we haven't shown any protection, we can probably stop looking because it doesn't work. And uh, then it would, it would be our uh, wish that much before a year has gone by, somebody calls us from this committee and says, look guys, you have to stop this trial because really the people that we have vaccinated with BCG are doing much better. Mm. 
and we should make this result known so that everybody else can also be vaccinated. All right. And Prof, while I have you here, I just like your thoughts on this. We just ran a story earlier this morning talking about scientists at a university in the Netherlands uh, saying they've made an early but promising step. They've created a protein antibody in the lab that seems to defeat coronavirus by neutralizing its cell cultures. If you are aware of that, I'd just like to know your thoughts very quickly on that and, and, and just how you feel about that. And obviously, are you are, are scientists around the world talking to one another about things like this? Oh yes, uh, obviously. I mean, uh, the, this the same study we're doing here is also done in Holland. Um, not sure if it's the same group, but they are using their healthcare workers to vaccinate them for the very first time. Whereas here in South Africa, we have all been vaccinated as babies, so we will be receiving it for the second time. So we do we do talk, and and it's clear for me that the BCG vaccine will not be the solution of the problem. Right? It might give us protection, it might prevent some deaths, it might make the symptoms less severe, which is great, but it's not going to eliminate the virus. So a real proper vaccine that is directed against the virus and gives us protection from the disease and also protection from being virus carriers, that is going to be the big thing. But that will take years to develop and to be tested and rolled out to everybody. So it probably makes sense to use what we have right now uh, as best we can and let the other scientists that actually do have good results with their designer vaccines uh, do their work and hopefully they fast and will give us something in time. All right. Thanks very much for that, Professor Andreas Diakon.